Welcome to Salcedo Paranormal. It is Sunday, uh, October 2nd, 2022. We finally made it to October this year. Um, thank you all for being here and for listening. And uh, tonight I'll be sharing true paranormal stories from the web. As always, you can find all the episodes of the show along with links to social media, ways to donate, and ways to contact me. Along with um, ways to contact me, like I just said, I think. Um, and always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions. Or if you have stories of paranormal experiences, uh, happy to, or whether they're your own or from others that you trust, happy to, uh, happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. So, um, but... Yeah, thank you all for being here. I'm trying out a new headset tonight, so uh, hopefully this works. So far, it seems to be working okay, which is good. And uh, and uh, we'll see how it goes from here on out. So um, the plan for the week is tonight is True Stories. Tomorrow will be the news. Um, Tuesday will be more stories. Wednesday will be a special show. I don't know what exactly it'll be yet. We'll see how, how everything goes. Um, and, uh, and then Thursday will be more news. So, um, and then, uh, that's it for the week. And then I may do a Friday show or a Saturday show if, uh, I find something I want to talk about. And if I, uh, feel up to it on one of those days, we'll see. Not both of those days. It'll be one of those days. <laughs> Not doing a seven day, uh, week of shows. That's a little bit too much. Um, but, um, looking forward to Halloween, it looks like, um, looks like Derek will be joining me on Halloween night for the show, and we'll be talking about, uh, Michigan, which is where I'm from, where I live, and anything paranormal, paranormal we can find out about that, that, um, that I wasn't aware of and that he wasn't aware of. Of course, he's not from here, but I am, so, um. It'll be fun to look into it, and especially from those two different angles of someone that lives here and someone that doesn't. So, um, that will be, that'll be fun. That's the plan for Halloween night, and that is on a Monday. So, um, and I think with that, I can start on these stories here that I found, uh, early this morning. It's really funny, I... Um, you know you do a lot of shows when you start doing the research for a show and you realize you're doing the, the research for the wrong show. I was doing the, the looking into the news for um, Monday or Monday's episode instead of the stories for today's episode. So, um, yeah, that wasn't so great. But at least now I'm all set for today and tomorrow. I got all that done early this morning. So take whatever I can get. But uh, anyway, so uh, let me see here. Let me get to the stories and we will get started. I found four of them this morning. And I went with four of them because they're not super long. And uh, so I don't mind doing these four stories here. Um, let's see here. So I'll get started on this story here. This says, so basically I walked outside of my parents' house at night, meaning there is no light on except for our neighbor's porch light. But basically the weird, uh, the weird bright light, kind of gray, so this weird bright light, I'm sorry, uh, kind of gray circled me super fast then just disappeared. It was very quick, so I couldn't focus on it or really process it 100%. I just wanted to know if anyone else has experienced this or if someone has an explanation for this. Can I have hallucinated it? I've never had anything strange like this happen to me. And that's where the story ends. So basically, to um, summarize after my my not so great reading of the story there uh seems like a um 
There was a strange light that circled this person. A more gray light, which is odd as well. Uh, kind of a gray. Circled them super fast. So I wonder if they mean... This one is odd because of the way it's written. And that's not a put down on anyone. On the writer or anything like that. But... Uh, um, it's, it's odd. I wonder if they mean that the light... There was a beam of light that went around them in a circle, or did it completely surround them? Or how did that work? Sounds like it was at night, which means that it'd be easier to see. Um, it really is, it really is an odd one. So fast and just that one random thing happening to them. So, um, neat story. I just wonder what that's about. Um, if you want to go with like a sci-fi angle to it, a lot of times when things are scanned or people are scanned, it's with a light, um, that covers them and then fades away. And that's how somehow the, the data is gathered. Um, but of course, it's, and there's no way to know if that was it. It is odd if it really did go in a circle around them, but also covered them, then that maybe leads in that direction. But it's really hard to tell just based on a short story like that, what, what was going on there. So, but again, we have these weird lights going on there. So, thought that was a neat one to share. So, um, let's see here. So I, I guess I'll get started in this next one. This one says, Yesterday morning, probably between 4 and 5 a.m., I had a very strange experience. I was woken up by what felt like someone pressing and sliding their fingers over the center of my forehead. I kept my eyes closed because I was tired. And before I was fully awake... My brain assumed it was my husband, giving me a kiss on my forehead. But I could hear him tossing and, and rustling in the bed next to me. It was a firm pressure from an outside force, and it continued for a second too long. So I opened my eyes to see what was going on, and I was sh shocked that there was nothing there. My husband was tossing and turning on the complete opposite side or end of the bed. He couldn't even brush against me, never mind press the tips of his fingers into my forehead. It stopped right after I opened my eyes. I know this is such a small, strange experience, but does anyone have any ideas? Or was it just something weird my imagination created? It was a very real experience. I was not asleep or dreaming. They had woken me up. And I had no trouble moving. No sleep paralysis. And that's where that story ends. Um, I'm wondering... Yeah, I'm just wondering if it really was some kind of sleep paralysis. Hello, Matt Tal. I see you there. Um, Matt Tal says that sounds like sleep paralysis. I don't know. I think it can be very tricky to to define that from person to person, if it's just something that happens for just a brief moment. Um, I wonder, yeah, that, that, that is an odd one. Um, but the forehead thing, it makes me almost think of like someone checking out someone's third eye in a way or doing something to it. Um, I don't know. It is amazing that there was nothing there when they opened their eyes. Um, but uh, I wonder if it was some kind of an energy, energy thing, energy transfer, energy. Again, this idea maybe of scanning or reading or checking out um, whatever is going on there or what, whatever the, the person is. Maybe just um, checking over the person. It's It's really odd. I didn't Put that together um oh and there goes the heater so sorry about that everyone but um i didn't really think about it that in that way but just now i did and that's odd that there's kind of that possibility in two stories in a row 
different forms of it, but still, um, still there. Oops. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, so odd story there as well. Um, also weird. I wonder if the, the person, their, their husband that said they were tossing and turning, was that because they were sensing something there as well? Um, or, okay, good, good. Um, just checking, getting volume checks here. So, so in case anyone, anyone listens to this, whenever you listen to this after, um, but yeah, the, the husband kind of tossing and turning in, in bed while this is happening. Um, I mean, obviously it could be unrelated, but it's also that the timing is, um, odd as well. It makes me wonder if there was maybe they were picking up on something. Might not even even realize what they were picking up on. If they were asleep, then they could have just been maybe having a weird dream, um, maybe a bad dream. It's really hard. If it was a bad experience, then it was. I feel, and this is hard to say. Maybe it wasn't the worst of bad experiences, if that makes any sense. Um, but I mean, it still could have been. But it's also hard to tell from that just based on that information what was really going on there if it was bad or not um so here we have a couple of just quick stories that really don't uh to me anyway they don't point in one certain direction as to what's going on there um there's other stories in other shows before where based on the, on the events it seemed like if it this pattern or that pattern or this kind of situation or that one and this doesn't really do that as far as i can tell again i don't i don't uh, claim to know anything about how this works or why this works but um yeah a couple of odd stories there so uh, i have two more left so i'll get to this next one this one says I was hired onto a job at an assisted living facility with approximately 20 or so residents. It was a few times I've seen this thing, but not as well as this one time. As I said, I've worked in this uh, assisted living facility, working 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. When night fell, there was, they were simply the worst times for me. While working or walking the halls to make sure that my residents were safe, I felt watched, and not just watched by my other co-worker or residents. Mind you, the evening shift only had two staff members after six, ending dinner, until the next shift arrives. Well, as I said, I felt watched. And it creeped me out. And it doesn't help knowing that this facility sat basically uh, surrounded by the woods. But this small town was haunted and known to be uh, the most haunted in the U.S. And again, I'm just saying that here, sipping on the story. Always um, be careful when, with, when you hear claims like that because I think it's really hard to tell. Um, not that I'm putting this person down. They they may just have read one article that talked about that, or a couple, of, even a couple of articles. It says um, to give you a hint on where it's where it is. It's also known for the Sally House, and I I know what that is, but I forget now the story behind it. Um. Anyway, it's a well fairly well known haunted haunted location, or at least the story of it is anyway. It says back to the story. It was one evening in November. It was time after residents cleared and headed off to bed. So uh, for my, mine and my co-worker working with me as well, this night meant downtime. We decided to go outside for some fresh air and just play on our phones. That doesn't seem so good, but okay. That's when something told me to look and I turned my head. And saw a tall man. Doesn't describe any of our residents. In all black. 
facing us through one of the side door windows facing the side porch where we were uh, sitting. This man or thing had a top hat on covering half of his face. I don't know what I did or why I had to look away for a slight second, but I did, and when I looked again, he was gone. And that's where the story ends. Um, and again, we have these stories of medical facilities. Uh, I wonder if that was some kind of a version of a guide for people that after they passed, maybe, possibly, or just someone drawn to the energy there. Um, hard to say. But uh, really amazing that this figure has been seen multiple times by the writer, and then they finally saw this figure. Um, I want to go back here to the story and check and see. Um, it says, doesn't say that the other, the other, the coworker doesn't say that the coworker saw this figure. So I wonder if this writer of the story is just sensitive to this kind of stuff. Um, or, or what's going on there. So, uh, interesting story and experience. Um, and I don't know what to make of that other than just seems like maybe that person is sensitive and they were, they were able to pick up on it better. Maybe I'd, I'd also be curious though. I mean, obviously there's no way to do this, but I'd be curious to, um, to know if any of the residents there ever sensed anything. And, uh, or any of the other co-workers that were there at night. Um, questions that you really can't get answers to easily, but, but that's what, uh, comes to mind for that story. So, but, uh, I guess I'll move on to the last story here for the night. And let's see here. This one is a little bit longer. Um, this one says, I'm a budding real estate investor and, and bought an old, or I'm sorry, an older house so that I can renovate and eventually rent out, rent it out. When I went to view the place with my realtor, the owner showed us around and also told us her sister had passed away in the bedroom upstairs. The house is a beautiful, not the time of viewing old home built in the early 1900s. As I'm a few months into the renovations, this happened a few months ago, April, I believe. A week after the trash guy came to clear out all of the furniture and trash left in the home by the previous owner, an older lady and a screenwriter playwright, I went over to begin patching walls so that a few days later I could paint. I got to the house very early in the morning. I took care of the four bedrooms upstairs and was downstairs working in the parlor room and dining room. I had been there since 8 a.m. and now the time was 5.30 p.m. As the house and town sits in a valley. The sun was down over the hills and it was getting dark. I was on the last wall I had planned to work on with my back turned from a pretty, pretty awesome antique record player the previous owner left behind. All of a sudden, the hand cranked record player starts going off, playing music. All the hair in my body rises, and I get goosebumps. I turn to look at the player, and it stopped playing. I packed my bags and left. A few months later, I was painting the staircase in the early afternoon, uh, and the landing going down to the first floor, when my hair stands on end, and I catch a quick glimpse from the corner of my eye 
of a woman with a white sleeping kind of garment on the first floor. This event creeped me out for mere seconds, and everything went back to normal. I kept working for a few more hours. My aunt helped me paint on a different occasion and stated that she was touched on her shoulder. It really is a beautiful house, but I sincerely believe she doesn't mean harm. And I'm guessing they mean the spirit there, whatever's there, or whoever's there. And that's an interesting, uh, neat story there. Um, sounds like a uh, presence, possibly, of that um, woman that maybe passed away there. Possibly, or at least some version of her. Whether it's... The touch is kind of hard to... Uh, I think so. Let's see. I podcast was she in white? I believe it said she was. Let me check on that again. If it was, yeah, if it was a white figure in white, then that is also quite the, uh, yep, white sleeping garment. Yeah. So that's that's also a good point in that um, it's a woman in white as well. So, um, but uh, yeah, it's... Uh, there was something going on there, it seems like. I wonder um, if the events ever continued later on. I'm, obviously, there's no way to know. But um, it doesn't sound like whoever it was meant any harm either. I, I kind of I agree with the, um, the writer there. <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe they were just trying to get the attention or say hello to whoever was there. Or in the one case of the, of the sighting, they may not have even known that they were going to be seen by the, the writer there. Um, so, neat story of a uh, um, an experience that was paranormal, but not not uh, terrifying as, as well. So, and uh, yeah, hard to say what uh, was going on there. Seems like maybe the woman that used to live there whether it was her spirit or a recording of her energy or um, some some other time anomaly where the sighting... The sighting definitely could have been that. The ones where it's contact and then it's gone. I don't know. I mean, that's that's that could also be that. But it's also, I wonder if that really is this person, uh, this person's spirit trying to get, get attention or just say hello. So in the only way they can. But um, that's it for tonight. Thank you all for listening and for uh, putting up with my uh, my comments about the headset. I'm glad it's working well. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow night with Paranormal News on the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care, everyone.